What is up, Facebook world, Facebook friends, Facebook family? And yeah, the gunslinger has got some haters out there too. They said that I can't, if they're gonna be my friend, they can't be friends with them. So the gunslinger's got some haters going on out there, which is fine because that means I'm growing. That means I'm building a presence, which is what I'm trying to do, which is why I'm gonna do 100 live streams in 100 days. And it might not be every single day, but I'm gonna hit 100 streams in 100 days. But when you're on your way to the top, when you're the top salesperson, you're one of the top salespeople, you're one of the top managers, you are gonna get hated on. So look at that as a compliment. So don't worry about your haters, look at it as a compliment. So what I wanted to talk about today is my latest blog post. What is your idea of customer service? Now let me tell you this, the definition of customer service is serving the customer before and after the sale. We are in the service industry. Yes, just like waiters and waitresses, and bartenders and so many other people we are in the service industry i am a trainer a sales trainer just like a trainer at the gym we went to the gym again today saw the trainers they're training people to work their muscles to know a workout to have a proper diet and to see results that is my same job to you but in a different sense my job is to get you excited about being in sales to let you identify and know what it takes to be good at sales to lay out the basic steps and processes that you need to implement in your game and your personality. Because if I tell you just how I did it, it's not gonna work for you. But if I tell you things that work and then you implement them with your personality and with your process, you will turn those, that information that I give you, that training that you receive, whether it's from a live feed, whether it's from a video, whether it's from YouTube, whether you sign up for my Conquer You virtual sales training platform, you need to implement that and tie that into your selling skills, abilities, personality, and your process. That's how you make it work. So a little bit about myself. What is the gunslinger, NWNA, conquer what you chase, know about customer service? Well, if you didn't know, I sold cars for 16 years. I've been in the business 18 years, and when I was 12 years old, an adolescent, a young teen, I used to go to the dealership and help in the prep department, help in the wash rack, wash cars and service. I did all types of stuff because I grew up in the business. But in my 16 years of sales, I was fortunate enough to spend the last 11 at Varsity Ford. Now, the last 20 months of my career at Varsity Ford, which just ended May of this year, so I was just, I'm fresh off the lot. And I've been building this business for six years, so I didn't just start this. I'm fresh off the lot and I've got six years experience in training, coaching, and helping you grow to the next level. But for the last 20 months, I flew from where I live in St. George, Utah, and spent the first two weeks of the month and flew to Ann Arbor, Michigan to sell cars at Varsity Ford, where I was still pumping out 15 to 25 cars a month. I talk about this a lot. I was on a call today with, uh, with Michael, Master Pistro, um, about how I made $150,000 last year selling cars in 25 weeks. That's 150 days, six days a week, 25 weeks, that's 150 days, I made $150,000. So why I always repeat this is because the money's there. But how did I get to where I could just work two weeks? Well, that's how I got the name Gunslinger, because I would come in, and my lovers love me, my haters hated me, so I've been dealing with this game for a long time. This is nothing new for me. Middle child of seven, too, so I've got, uh, I've got some thick skin, and, I, and I've been through, been through a lot of bullying and that type of thing. I can handle it. But he called me an uh, uh, associate, uh, a co-worker, another salesperson, called me the gunslinger. And this guy used to own a dealership in South Carolina because just like a gunslinger, I would come into town and I would throw out my 15 to 25 vehicles. First day was just returning voicemails, returning emails, setting appointments, setting appointments, setting appointments. Text and email and social media messages are not tools to sell cars. They are tools to get the customer on the phone or to make the appointment, and from the phone we therefore make the appointment too because you wanna sell somebody who's in front of you. You wanna have that presence. You wanna give them that customer service. So I definitely have the customer service down that my people were willing to wait because they knew the service I was gonna give them, the process that I put them through, I took all the pain out of the deal, and the fact that 
They were comfortable with me and they knew what they were going to get. They knew what the final product was going to be and they knew the service and the feeling that I was going to give them. So that is customer service. That's why I consider myself a customer service expert because I showed that I was a customer service expert because my customers told me that I was a customer service expert and because I utilized the tools I have. So we talked about this. Customer service is serving the customer before and after the sale. When the customer's on the lot, when they're at your desk, when they're in the showroom, when they're on the phone, you're sending them an email, always touch base on something you know about them that they like. I'm a family man. Talk about my family, you're gonna butter me up and I'm gonna be smiling and I'm gonna trust you. If they're a 100 hours a week worker, talk about work, how's work going, how's this? Have you been hitting your bonuses? Get them talking about work. Get them talking about something that they truly love, what their why is and what they're passionate about, okay? Serve the customer, listen to them. When we're in a deal, Two ears, one mouth. So that means we should listen 66.6% .6 of the time and only talk 33.3% .3 of the time. At times we talk about ourselves and our family and what we're passionate about and what we're interested in and what we like to do. At other times, we want to get them, we want to ask questions and we want to extract their needs and wants and find how we can fill that convenience that they're looking for. There's a reason they're on the lot to see you. They came to buy something. Referrals and repeats are the easiest. If you serve your customers, if you truly serve your customers before and after the sale, they will appreciate that and they will remember that. They will come back to you and give you repeat business and they will refer their friends and family to you. You won't always have to pay them. They want to do this because they know you take care of them. I've talked about this before. I had a gentleman I did, he sent me six referrals in one month. The guy wouldn't take any money. His number one requisite was just make sure you take care of them the same way you always took care of me. So guess what? Every time they called, every time they came in, before and after the sale, if they had a problem, I always gave them 110% customer service, made sure that they were satisfied, made sure that they were happy, and made sure to let this customer know how much I appreciated him sending them to me. That is customer service. That's how you build a client base that you can get referrals off of, that's easy to get surveys from, that's easy to get Facebook likes from, that's easy to get reviews from. And then stay engaged. Send letters, send postcards, friend them on Facebook, send a, send a message here and there, send them a birthday card, call them on their birthday, stay in front of them, stay in touch. Uh, Garth Hammer was talking about how he gets birthday cards, him and his wife, from their car salesperson, and he thought it was kind of cute and kind of funny, and he knows it's all part of the game, he's in sales too, but guess who he's going to call first when they're ready for a new vehicle? His salesperson, because they stayed in front of him. He, he kept that presence. He stayed there. How often have you dealt with somebody that you really liked and you never heard from them again, or you got one generic letter or email or you got their email blast and you just knew that they really weren't engaged. Now, yeah, they're staying in front of you, but handwritten notes, handwritten birthday cards, uh, just type your own email. Hey, just wanted to let you know, um, I was thinking about you the other day. I sold a car just like the one I sold you. The family was just as happy as you guys were when you left in yours. Uh, I was just thinking about you. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out. And by the way, bam, that is where we ask for reviews, surveys, or referrals. Every time we make a contact, we give them, we fluff them up. We make them feel good about themselves. We make them feel important. We remind them of the deal that we had, how it was great dealing with them, how you love seeing little Sally. She's the cutest little girl you ever saw. And little Johnny is a ball of energy and you wish you had half of his energy because that kid is wild and I don't know how you and Mrs. Jones do it, but you guys really do it. Keep them engaged, keep them excited, keep them in remembrance of the deal. Like I talked about in my blog is, People rarely remember the deal they got. They'll remember if you went back and forth to the desk 20 times. They'll remember how painstaking and annoying that process was. They'll remember if you left them at your desk for an hour unattended with no clue of what's going on. Are we getting approved? Are we going to be able to get this? Wait, somebody just moved our car. Is somebody else buying it? What's going on here? We don't know. We've got a soccer game. We've got dinner with the neighbors. We've got a barbecue. Everybody has stuff going on in their life. Respect that. That is serving your customer. 
But people rarely remember the deal they got, but they remember the feeling that they got when they dealt with you. That is your biggest opportunity right there to make gross and to get repeat and referral business is leave them with a lasting memory and then touch base on that. That is one of the killer things I had. I take a three by five card, I'd write the husband's name down, the wife's name down, where he worked, where she works, how old their kids were, how many kids they had, what their kids' names were, and what their kids did. Sally's a reader, Johnny's a soccer player, Billy's a basketball player, and I would remember too, I'd write, uh, Johnny had a soccer game before they came in, he scored three goals. Guess what, when they came in for their next vehicle and they're shopping around, we're gonna look at Chrysler this time, we're gonna look at Toyota, and we're gonna give GM a chance. I'd say, hey, remember how happy you guys were when you got that Explorer off me? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, is Johnny still playing soccer? Because I remember he had three goals that day. They're like, how do you remember that? Because I always remember my favorite customers. And guess what? All my customers are my favorite. Might sound cheesy, might sound tacky. It works. It's making people feel important. It's making people know that you remembered them, that you actually cared for them as a person. That is customer service, serving them through the deal, keeping them in line of what's going on. I talked to Jason Sapp the other day. And he said, you know what, all you have to do, and I, th I think I brought this up on a live stream the other day, but it's worth repeating, is all you've got to do is if you've got 10 customers in the showroom, and believe me, I know a lot of guys, Jason Sapp sells 50 a month, uh, Kurt Sieb sells 30, 40 a month, my boy Chad Linz sold 60, he sells 50, he sells 40 every month, so there's some big hitters out there, but what Jason Sapp told me is all you have to do is go up to him every 5 or 10 minutes and just kind of let him know what's going on. Hey Mike. Um, I'm just waiting to hear back from finance. They're a little backed up today. It's the end of the month, but um, so we're just waiting on the final approval. I've got the vehicle in prep, so that's getting ready there. Once we get the final approval, we'll get everything typed up. It should only take 30, 45 minutes or however long you want me to spend with you going over the documents and going over the features on the vehicle. And if you are running a little short on time, um, believe me, they're all standard documents. I'm not gonna sneak anything in on you. We don't do that. But if you are running a little low on time, you can always come back, especially maybe when you don't have the kids, and I can go over the Bluetooth, I can go over some of the technology and how that kind of stuff works. Keep them clued in, that's customer service. And then like I recommend too, and I'm, I'm giving you a little bit of pointers that I went through in my, in my virtual training. I just shot 90 videos, I'm going to Chattanooga, I'm gonna shoot some more there, and then I'm going back to Michigan for a family trip, and I'm gonna go back to Toledo and try and shoot another 90 videos or however many I can get in two or three days. But after they leave, before they get home, send them a text message. Just shoot them a quick message. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, it was a pleasure dealing with you. Uh, Sally, you were, you were great to work with. Um, even though Doug was a little, a little rough at first, don't worry, I can take it. I'm a salesman, I'm used to it. Uh, Johnny and Sally are both beautiful kids. I can't believe how well uh, mannered they are. And you guys must do a great job raising them. I'm glad you're going out to eat after your new Explorer. I just wanted to thank you again that I appreciate your business. You know, that's customer service. Following up, if their car's in the body shop, follow up. First thing I'd ask is when people would say I got in an accident, um, which is kind of bittersweet because a lot of times we know we're getting another sale. But the first thing you ask is just being a good natured human is, is everybody okay? Of course, that's the first thing we care about. Is everybody fine? Nobody was hurt, no broken bones. Excellent. Well, what's going on with the car? Well, it's at your body shop. Okay, I'll go back and check on it. Do you know how much damage? Oh, it's, it's beat up pretty bad. We think it's gonna be totaled. All right, excellent. Well, let me go check on that. Me, you, the body shop, and the insurance company will all stay in communication, we'll all stay in contact with each other, and we'll ride this through, and if I can get my body shop to maybe get them to where they, they do total it so you don't have to have something that's put back together, then we'll talk about a new one. But until then, I'm glad everybody's safe. Let's get through this part, and then we'll look on to the next part. Let your customer know that you're working for them, always. Serve your customer, serve their needs, serve their wants, Serve their, they came in because they want a convenience. So serve their inconvenience. And they have a need. They need a bigger vehicle. They need something with better gas mileage. Fulfill their need. They have a want. They want certain colors. They want certain options. They want certain technology. They want certain features. Fulfill that want. That's what customers want. Selling is easy. It's just listening. And like, if, if you didn't read the blog post, you should read it, but I talked about a realtor that we had who for $4,100 blew our relationship. And we'd run into her in town and it was an uncomfortable feeling for both of us. 
And everybody I ever talked to about her, I gave her a bad rap because she did rip us off. Now think if she had done things the right way or when it came to that, maybe she did make a mistake, but rather than pushing me to the carpet, well, you're going to lose your $2,000 good faith money. And she said, hey, you know what? I messed up, but if there's anything I can do, let me talk to the homeowner. Let me do this. Maybe I can get you a free warranty. Maybe I can cut the commission on my end. We would have used her for life. And believe me, anybody who ever did business with me gets 10 referrals from me because people value my opinion. I talk a lot as if you might have noticed. And when somebody does a great job, I promote them and I let others know about it. When somebody does a horrible job, I unpromote them and let people know about it. So be that customer service specialist who's a sales professional, who truly listens to their customers, identifies their wants, needs, and the inconvenience that they're trying to fulfill, and capitalize on that. Deliver on that and give back to them. Once again, Noel Walsh, NWNA, Conquer What You Chase, sales training, Gunslinger is out. Thank you for